Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Jim Wetzel, I'm the uh, Director of Global Reliability at General Mills. I'm also the uh, Chairman of, of the Board of the Smart Manufacturing Leadership Coalition. And what I'm going to talk to you today and a little bit about, uh, give you a little preamble of, of kind of where we've been in the last 12 months and what's happened since we spoke here last year. And then um, I'll turn it over to uh, Tom Edgar and Jesus from Praxair to, to, to show you what practical examples have happened in the last 12 months. Is there a clicker? Oh, <laughs> Dean has Sorry, it. Jim. And Dean was the chairman of the Smart Manufacturing Leadership Coalition <laughs> before he took over as the Digital Manufacturing Institute. So there is a relationship there as well, and hopefully more to follow. Um, so uh, smart manufacturing. Uh, what is smart manufacturing? Um, everyone's going to ask this question. I don't know, Dean, if you actually answered this in, oh. in yours on Industry 4.0, on digital manufacturing. Um, these are buzzwords that um, you know, uh, really need a good definition. Uh, here's a shot. Smart manufacturing, from a business perspective, we're trying to create new value at the speed of business. So what does that mean? So, so you think about uh, words that typically the automation and control folks want to use around, uh, let's see, what's the potpourri of words? Integrated, uh, responsiveness, synchronized, automation, uh, et cetera. But when I try to sell that in my company, uh, the, the leadership of my organization, their eyes gloss over. And so when I try to sell smart manufacturing, I don't want to sell it from a control and automation perspective. I want to sell it from a business perspective. And so what's unique and what's different about this concept of smart in, in manufacturing is we're trying to make manufacturing differential, but at the speed of business, not at the speed of a of uh, a download from a, a database, not at the speed of a monthly report, but at the speed of, of our business and the business response. So in my business, you know, we're in the food industry. Some things need to happen extremely fa fast. Some things need to happen in micro scans kinds of things because I'm adjusting and optimizing uh, a plant floor uh, unit operation. Some things uh, uh, are more uh, broader, like a supply chain network. And I, need, and I need to manage those in a, in a different speed than microseconds. It might be days, it might be months, it might be just a longer perspective. So we think about this topic of smart and it's really about how can we take manufacturing into this new world that as business changes, we have an answer for it. It's not about two years or five years later we build a new infrastructure and say, okay, now we're ready. So how do we get ready? Well, we have to be able to solve today's and future problems. This concept of future proofing, um, I've, I've been around long enough to know that when we had proprietary systems, proprietary systems aren't future proofing. Having an ecosystem uh, uh, of a particular supplier is not future proofing. So to get to the concept of smart, to get to the concept of being able to have, to have manufacturing respond to business demands in the speed of business and to be able to not have to redesign our architecture every single time, that is what we're branding as smart manufacturing. At General Mills, I showed this slide last year. Um, don't worry about the, the white print, but really what this is, is I've spent 20 years in control and automation um, building applications that do things for General Mills. And in the process of doing these things, every single one of these boxes is, has an architecture and ecosystem behind it. That's not smart because it's, it doesn't allow me future-proofing. It doesn't allow me to knit things together in a unique way. This is a series of, of, a, of an iceberg of point solutions. Point solutions, databases, fragile integration, um, a lot of connectivity, and we hope that a, a number of key people in our organization don't get hit by a bus. Because if they do, this thing will, will derail. And I, and I know a lot of you in the audience are probably in the in the same place where, yes, you can, you can go to booth of the day and you can read brochure of the day, um, but this is what you end up with. An ecosystem of stuff because it's not all connected, it's all branded by a particular thing and there's a database in there for everybody. 
we're trying to solve this with SMART. So a group of us, Dean was included in that back in the day, but a group of us got together sharing our, our kind of common frustrations and said, we need a different model. We need a different model. And again, this, you, this is back in 2006 and seven. So you think about where we are 10 years later. Um, just like 3D printing might have be popular right now, but it was a 20, 20 to 30 year um, exposure in working in that. Same with smart manufacturing. This has been a 10 year journey to get, get to Internet of Things and Industry 4.0 and digital manufacturing. Our mission is to lead the industrial sector transformation in connected, information driven, open, real time, high value, optimized, radically improved productivity, innovation, sustainability of manufacturing. Anyone want a slice of pie? This is mom and apple pie time, right? We all share the same, I think all of us in this room share the same vision. We'd love that statement to be true. So what are some of the attributes of smart manufacturing? If we're trying to um, create business value in the manufacturing space, in the supply chain network, what are those differences and what are those differentiated kinds of uh, activities and attributes that we need to make sure are part of our network and part of our platform? Insight control, efficiency, and security, and access by all. So at General Mills, we, we collect over 700 billion data points a day. Where's the insight? I got a pile of stuff in my pile of iceberg, but what computer application, what machine learning, what algorithm is telling me what to go work on? What, what algorithm is telling me the insight of the day? There's a gap there. This concept of control I just caught the end of yours, Dean, and you're talking about the supply network. Um, we need to maintain this, this state and status of control of, 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 an, of the flow of materials from raw material through the conversion process to the finished good. And when you go from, and you follow the flow and try to maintain the control, there's very few companies in this world that are totally integrated from beginning to end. So how do you have that st the state of that ingredient um, or material be managed from beginning to end when you're going to jump, by default, you're going to jump across many people's information systems. So in the food industry, we're governed to, to actually have to go a number of tiers. So we have to go one tier ahead of us and one tier behind us and understand the state of those ingredients. Um, the the F United States uh, FDA requires of that of us. So we automatically have to spend outside the bounds of our walls. So smart manufacturing, the concept, an attribute of smart manufacturing is to be able to connect outside your own world. Efficiency. Um, it can't take years and years and years to implement. So you take a look at uh, a number of massive projects that have happened in the past and, and quite, quite honestly, you know, you think about the speed of the internet or think of internet thinking or internet time, um, being able to develop applications and deploy them in days, weeks, or months versus months and years. Um, we need to get to that frame breaking capability. And then access and security, you know, whether we're using cloud technology or on-premise technology, being able to uh, ensure that your data is secure, may be able to have small and medium-sized companies do the stuff that big companies do. So, so you think about you know, companies like, like uh, General Mills, we're roughly a $20 billion company. We've got resources that small, small companies do not have. And, and the spirit and in in what we're really trying to do in smart manufacturing is, is um, take the capabilities that a number of us as leaders have developed and allow it to be used for literally uh, nothing or next to nothing for small companies to be able to foster their capabilities and have th those small companies integrate with the medium-sized companies and integrate with the large companies. So what is needed? Have to have an architecture that's open. Have to be able to get the plug and play. Have to have this, comp this concept of a common platform. And you hear from other speakers this afternoon, you probably already heard it from this morning, and you'll hear, you'll hear it, I'm sure, this week ad nauseum, this concept of connected. Um, that's easier said than done. And one of the things that most people don't talk about is not just, not just about open, plug, and, and connected, but contextualized. 
So it's one thing to say, yeah, I, with this protocol, I can connect A with B, but A might be date, time, and value, and B might be uh, product and SKU and something, something else, and how do, you, how do you contextualize this information together so that you can act on it? Because at the end of the day, if we're creating new, vili new value at the speed of business, it's about solving those difficult problems that the, the, the data needs to be connected across multiple aspects and slices for. And that's a tough nut to crack, this whole contextualized issue. So you take a look at smart manufacturing and, and what does it encompass? It's all about real time. And that's also a differentiating. It's not about um, uh, transactional information that might be batched up. This is about real time. It's about advanced sensors and controls and modeling. It's about machine to plant enterprise and the concept of a broad supply chain and aspects of decision making, but based on insights and data. So I'm sure like many of your companies, um, you're seeing this explosion of data-driven analysis, data that you can act on. So we have 700 billion data points in my company are collecting a day. Collecting a day. The question you might want to ask is how many, of the, how many of those are you acting on? And the answer, the honest answer is very few. And so in the old days, meaning old days meaning probably five years ago, um, the IT professionals would say, which one is, how many of those 700 billion data points do you want to delete because you're not acting on them? And my answer would be zero. Because I don't know what I don't know. And I know that as soon as I got a problem uh, to solve that I hadn't seen before, those, those data points that I don't have are the data points I need. So in the new world, what, what, what's the strategy in the new world? Internet of things, smart sensors, collect everything, put it in the cloud, size doesn't matter. Right? So you're going to hear more and more about that. You're going to hear more about the vendors saying that. You're going to hear more about the solution providers saying that. You're going to hear more from a smart manufacturing perspective to say, we need to be data rich, clearly from the bottom up. And then the tough nut is that we have to provide insight to act on. And combining that together is what's going to make it, this a different world from what we've been living in. So again, the key concepts, this is my last slide. I'm going to turn it over to the the use cases that we're working on. We're really trying to get to the concept that it's vendor agnostic. We're not picking a vendor. We're trying to figure out how the ecosystem can play nice. It has to be modular. So I've used this example before. I guess I can use it again. Um, I think everybody in the room has some, some model of, of smartphone. Um, and the idea that we're really trying to get after is the concept of modularization. You know, th this little smartphone has got over a million applications that I can um, add to my portfolio. In General Mills, in my manufacturing sites or in my supply chain, how many applications do I have to pick, pick from that are going to add value, create value, and solve business problems? Just the handful of cast of characters that I picked as my business partners, whether it be Rockwell or Wonderwear or SAP or OSI, or you pick your partner of the day, but that limits your solution set. So I no longer have a million. I've got a, a number um, that I can probably count on my hands and my feet. If we're going to try to really revolutionize the capability of manufacturing, we need to have a million different solutions that we can apply to our problems. So this concept of getting to modular, and then the second aspect of that is, is creating this marketplace of solutions that it can reside in. So it's going to change, and it's going to be disruptive to a number of different folks in the commerce side. So you think about uh, your, your phone again. A million applications that you can pick, of, pick from. Some are free. Some are 99 cents. Some are 5 bucks. Some are, some are 10 bucks, right? Think how that disrupts the, the current uh, commercial model of deploying software in the manufacturing space. Again, you're going to hear more about smart manufacturing be a disruptive influence. Um, uh, last two, pay for what you need and leverage the knowledge of all. The pay for what you need, and this has been a pet peeve of mine at General Mills, um, the historic model is pay for what the sales guy wants to sell you, regardless of how much of that application you use. So again, the, the, the capability of, you know, you think of, again, this model of modular applications, you're paying for the slice that you're actually using, not for the whole not for the whole enchilada. And so that's what we're trying to do there. And the leverage knowledge of all, 
The concept there is that in the smart manufacturing world, and in particular the leadership coalition that I chair, uh, there's a lot of goodwill there. And it's this idea that there's a lot of us that have been thought leaders and have been working on this for many, many years. We need to pay it forward. We need to take the knowledge we have and share it with others so that everybody else can become better. Because as everybody else becomes better and everyone else becomes stronger, manufacturing becomes stronger in America. And, and that's what we're trying to make sure it happens. I know Dean shares that from a digital manufacturing. I certainly share that from a smart manufacturing perspective. Um, we don't want to hoard our knowledge. We want to share our knowledge. And we want, to, we want to make it accessible to all. So that's just the background on smart manufacturing. I'm going to turn it over to Tom Edgar. And, and he's going to walk through um, what we've done in a pilot. So you, you can keep that on. We're going to stay on the same deck. And in this pilot, um, what Tom has done is, is uh, the Smart Manufacturing Leadership Coalition has um, uh, received a grant from the Department of Energy. And it was to, to all of the stuff that I just talked about, Department of Energy said, OK, that sounds good. Yeah, that's mom and apple pie. Go do it. Go do it. And, and so we, we got a, a little over a $10 million grant from the Department of Energy. And we have two locations that we're actually trying to do what I just talked about in. One is at Praxair, and we'll talk about that, and one is at General Dynamics. So with that, I'll have Tom um, talk about this. <laughs> 